and happy Saturday today in this vlog we are doing our normal jazzy things but we're also gonna be talking about poop poop dog this is a poop vlog welcome to the welcome back to the poop vlog guys so yeah but there's a lot of things we have to do before that discussion like of course go to the gym and hit a angel wing lift and then we're doing some meal prep this morning to have some exciting items ready for later so what are we prepping at? So meal prep before the gym We've got two appliances, so this is Please say Pam. hello to Pam. And this is Cecilia. And Cecilia. Pam drives a van. So Pam is a Instant, or an Instant Pot version from Crock-Pot. Crock -Pot. So it has both the Instant Pot and the traditional slow cook. We tried Pam for bone broth, didn't work out well for the Instant Pot, so we like to use the slow cook functionality. So we got two slow cooks going. In this one we got beef tongue, so beef lengua. lengua. We have a whole video on how we prep beef tongue and why you should eat it. Link that in the description you get, below. You get to cooking, Pam. But then in Cecilia, I'm doing another batch of bone broth and I'm doing a full poultry bone broth. This is our fa well, this is like probably my favorite uh, bone broth recipe because it tastes amazing. So one of the main parts of it is the full carcass and this is a stewing hen. So this is not a meat bird, so meat birds are bred uh, to get nice and big and juicy for big. their meat, right? So this is a laying hen. They've been laying eggs their whole life. They live a lot longer life. They live like two years. So they like run around a lot more. And so therefore <laughs> their bones have a lot more vitamins, nutrients, uh, are a lot stronger. Uh, so that's why they make a great bone broth. They have skinny legs like me, okay? <laughs> so we get ours from White Oak Pastures because they do pastured poultry properly. So chicken stewing hen. And then also in here, we've got chicken feeties, of course, and full heads. Like so Bobby. we've got turkey heads in here. And this is what really provides like the unique taste and nutrients because all the organs from inside the head, um, it just really offers a really unique taste. So yeah. we actually wrote a full blog post on how we make this full poultry broth on White Oak Pasture site, and that link will be in the description. Yes, I will link that. It's really cool because you actually don't need any exogenous spices in that broth recipe for it to have a very hearty flavor, so I would recommend Try using some heads, using some beet, checking it out. But until then, guys, let's go get that angel wings. Episode. So we were on the doctors with Paul Saladino and we asked them to turn it on. So here's Paul getting attacked by them 
there's us. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. But honestly, you we will include a link to like the doctor's website where you can watch some segments of the episode. It was pretty clear from the start that they wanted to label us as some extreme females. So especially like raw eating scavenger vampires. The first question they asked us was, don't you guys eat a lot of raw meat? And then they get into like unrelated questions about, did you guys have an eating disorder? Isn't your uh, food really expensive? So they're just trying to label carnivore movement as negative from the start, instead of inquiring or asking about the benefits that we've seen. It, it, honestly, just rid ridiculous, but go check it out. Any uh, exposure to the carnivore movement, carnivore diet is good exposure because they will come to this community and then see all these amazing individuals thriving and you simply just can't deny results. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll just be here with my good poop. Yeah, we'll just be here with pooping good <laughs> after years of consuming a bunch of vegetables and fiber and not pooping for days, so I'm not mad about it. All right, let's go oh, make man. platter number one. All right, whipped up a very quick platter number one. We've got a raw chicken yolk. We've got the rest of the guinea fowl confit, raw beef suet, some lightly seared beef liver in butter on a cast iron, and then some lightly seared round steak. Everything seasoned with Redmond. Let's see you. All right, let's talk poop. So fiber is one of those things that we have to have in our diet to poop, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I actually lost faith in fiber years before switching to keto and carnivore. So I have been dealing with chronic constipation since like age 10 or 12. As it's, long as I've known this girl. It's honestly she been, hasn't been, able been to. so long. And I've seen numerous doctors and the only thing that they would prescribe would be Miralax, psyllium husk, laxatives, and all of those just made my problems worse. So it's pretty common for me to go five, six, seven, eight, nine days without pooping. She went to Ireland. Yeah, I went to Ireland and I didn't poop the entire trip and it was a t nine or 10 day trip. Yeah, um, but Interesting. Two other funny stories. First, I went to the Mayo Clinic, so one of the best hospitals in the in the country, uh, for this chronic constipation issue, and I had to eat radioactive eggs. So I ate a radioactive eggs that had like some sort of dye that would come up on a test, and so they tracked the eggs going through my digestive system. Didn't find anything wrong with me. And then second funny story, I went to the ER about two years ago. This was in Urbana. Yeah. yeah. I went to the ER because my stomach was hurting so badly I thought something was wrong inside of me and they did x-rays and the only thing that was wrong with me was that I had poop like backed up to like here. To her boobies. Yeah. I see, I don't have that bad of, I never had as bad as digestion problems as Ashley, but I did get the same x-ray done at our university hospital and had poop up to my chest. So it just shows that something was not going right. Yeah. So. Constipation is the reason that we came to carnivore. Yeah. It's the reason she started carnivore in the first place. Yeah, and honestly, fiber was not helping me before this, and so we figured we would just briefly discuss a few reasons, like why people think we need fiber and why we actually don't. So and then people, our experience. Yeah, and then our <coughs> our digestion improvements switching to carnivore. So the main two reasons people claim we need car uh, fiber is one, it helps us poop since fiber isn't digested in our digestive tract so it like moves the poop through the system. And the second is fiber is broken down into a molecule called butyrate and butyrate is the preferred energy source for the cells that line our gut. So they say like how can your gut microbiome be healthy and have energy without that butyrate? Well, as it turns out when you're in ketosis our liver is producing ketone bodies and the most abundant ketone body our liver produces is called beta-hydroxybutyrate, BHB. And BHB is very similar to this butyrate molecule that is formed by the breakdown of fiber. So it turns out that BHB can serve as that energy source for the intestinal cells. So it's, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. cool. It's, pretty, it's cool. pretty cool. So we're not here to like poop on fiber. Um, there is a time and place and role for fiber. So for example, someone with a healthy gut microbiome that is carb-based eating a standard American diet, fiber can be pretty beneficial, I think. I don't know, I never had that experience. Um, but there's also a, a few studies showing that for people with chronic constipation, the removal of fiber can actually improve constipation symptoms. And we'll link that study description in the description below. And in the context of carnivore keto, we don't think that fiber is absolutely necessary because of that beta-hydroxybutyrate. 
But now more onto our experience yes, we when have. switching to carnivore. Vastly different experience. Opposite sides of the spectrum. Yes. So do you want to start with mine or yours? Let's start so, with mine. I feel yeah. like mine's more common. Yeah. My experience with digestion when I first switched to carnivore was the pretty standard one that I've heard about, which is pretty bad diarrhea. So like liquid poops every single day, two weeks, three weeks, a month. I had diarrhea for about a month straight when I first went to carnivore and I thought I was dying. Like I didn't think that I was absorbing any of the nutrients in my food, but after I looked into it, come to find out that it's actually pretty common to have that experience. When you're switching from a higher fiber, high carb diet to a low carb, higher fat diet, your pancreas excretes lipase to help digest those fats and your body might need to catch up to that point if you are just switching to a higher fat diet. It will adjust and you will get rid of the diarrhea. I did finally, I don't have diarrhea anymore but it might take some time. And that's why some people do recommend that you do take lipase to help with that transition, which it can be an effective supplement, but I guarantee you if you just give it time, you will stop having diarrhea. It just takes time and honestly, it's person dependent. It took me, like I said, about a month, but now I've never pooped better. And I will say that like for a first, so for about a month I had the diarrhea and then for about once a month I would return to having like a really weird Bowels, ex, bowels, ex, explosion <laughs> in the toilet maybe once a month but then now i haven't had that um i haven't had that since it could also be like four or five months ago and my uh, the digestion has been excellent yeah so i poop daily it's normal logs if you want to call it there's like a poop chart you can find on google i have a good poop on that chart but my experience was very different from hers. <laughs> Mine, I was on the exact side, opposite side of the spectrum, so I actually had even worse constipation when first switching over. I went 21, 21. days, maybe the Guinness Book of World Records, That's really uncomfortable. without pooping, 21 like days. That makes me ache inside. Um, so for anyone experiencing digestion issues and constipation with carnivore, give it a chance, give it some time. It may take a little bit for just your body to re-regulate out. Fast forward to now, almost a year on carnivore, my poops have never been better, have never been more regular. They are amazing formed. I would be 100%, I would get 100% golden star. Amazing formed. With like, if someone were to analyze my poop, they, it, looks, it looks great, I'm a great pooper now. Yeah. Something you could consider if you are having issues with the poops is your fat sources. I wouldn't necessarily limit fats, but I would maybe if you're doing a lot of rendered fats like ghee, tallow, so like liquid fat, liquid animal fat sources, maybe switch some of those to a raw fat source. That's why we are we like include so much raw beef suet and raw bone marrow in our diet, raw, raw iberico pork fat. Those are our favorite raw fat sources. When I first started carnivore, so right at the beginning, um, I was eating a ton of rendered fat. So I was doing ghee hats on top of my Shoot burgers. Like ghee plops. I burgers. would eat all of the rendered bacon fat that came off from cooking <laughs> bacon. Um, and so I think that that's why it took a long time for my body to like adjust and improve my constipation because I was relying on the rendered fats. But now that I rarely consume rendered fats, I think that in, in prioritize like raw beef suet, raw Iberico pork fat, raw egg yolks, so these raw animal fat sources, my digestion has really improved. So if you're someone that is coming to carnivore with previous digestive issues, compromised gut, compromised gut, compromised guts, you should really pay attention to your fat sources. And I think Dr. Paul Saldino kind of explained this as someone with a compromised gut, you have like holes in your gut. And so those rendered fats can act as like little boats and take bad bacteria and bad stuff inside your gut out of the gut lining and into like the rest of your body. She's doing like a little bob oh, right now. Bobbing. <laughs> uh, I don't know exactly the science behind that and I don't know really if, if anyone does, but I just know it was causing more issues. So we are no poop experts, no. but we have drastically improved our poop. So we I just mean, had to share this. Someone who was dealing with chronic constipation for over like 15 years now poops every two days. Like that's what? why on her resume, I poop. I'm a like pooper. multiple times a, a week pooper. with good shapes and stuff, okay? Without any fiber. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty shocking. So yeah. All right, now we gotta run to the mall, right? Let's go to the mall, guys. All right, so I'm out here at the Market Square Mall.
So when we got home from the mall, we took this beautiful beef tongue out of the slow cooker. It was in there for about eight and a half, nine hours. Peeling off the skin, which we will save. Look at this beautiful tongue. Shred that bad boy. It's ready to shred. Shred it. Alright, the time has come for platter number two. One of the best times of the day. So let's see what's on these bumpin' platters. We got two of them. Zoom in on one plate. Round steak, lightly seared on the cast iron. That shredded beef tongue, beef barbacoa. Over easy egg. A side plate of fat, so this is raw beef suet. We've got some wiggly jiggly bone broth and then some of the braised kidney stew. All right, so this is going, we are going to enjoy this, get some work done and wrap up our day. Yes, if you have enjoyed hanging out with us the last few days, we'll be vlogging every single day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so we can hang out some more. And until tomorrow morning, guys, behave like an angel. <laughs>